Hey, Smart Christians, welcome back. I was sent a video to take a look at by one of the viewers, uh, Marshall K. Johnson, who wanted me to take a look at this particular person. I think his name is Henry Thomas. I'm not sure of his name, but I guess he's got a lot of videos on TikTok. And he is speaking about uh, egalitarianism and complementarianism. In other words, can a woman fulfill the role of the office of a pastor? Is that okay biblically? Now, his contention is that a woman can and that all of us who believe that she cannot, uh, that one, we, are, we, have fall, we have fallen victim to uh, this <laughs> white colonized way of thinking. How that creeps in, I don't know. But also that we don't understand our Greek and that we don't understand church history and what the Bible actually intended. So let's look at the video first and then let's kind of take a look at what he stated and see if it's true or false. I'm telling you ahead of time, he's wrong. Another person who don't know how to exegete scripture. When you read your Bible, let me help you out. Maybe you, you're not familiar with the Greek. Well, verse one of 1 Timothy said, if anyone. The word man in there is the generic word for man. That phrase is anyone, it's gender neutral. If anyone. Now let's do a couple of things. First of all, when he says that, um, speaking about exegeting scriptures, to exegete means to pull out what it says. I'm just giving you kind of a rough definition, but whatever it says, we take out of it from what we're reading. We're not going to put anything into it unless, obviously, if we've got the backdrop of other scriptures to add to it. And so if there are some scriptures that we can look at either prior to this scripture being written or after or surrounding to kind of add to this to give us the idea, in this case, about women preaching, well, then we should go ahead and do so. Now, the problem is, though, we don't have any scriptures where we can even rem where we can even think that that's even a possibility where we can draw from. And there's other passages somewhere that tell us that women are to be leading men. Women are to be teaching and preaching and pastoring, shepherding men. We don't see that concept anywhere. And so this would be, at the outset of what he's just stated, what he's doing is classic eisegete, reading into a passage his own beliefs, his own views. But then he talk, talks about, uh, in the very beginning, in this passage in 1 Timothy 3, let's go there and look at it. He says that uh, this particular passage he says at this particular passage, there is no, uh, there's a gender neutral when it says if anyone. Now, on his point, this Greek word right here, tis, he's correct. It is uh, gender neutral, even though it's masculine, which doesn't mean anything. Because the word is feminine, masculine, or neutral, uh, or neuter, doesn't mean anything in terms of re relating to a person's gender. For example, in Hebrew, the word Abba, that's a feminine term, that's a feminine noun, but it only refers to a man, a father, a male. And so in this case, the word tis does only does refer to anyone, a certain one, somebody. The problem is he's not carrying out his rules throughout the rest of the scripture. Whosoever, if Paul meant for that to be male man, he could have used the word andros. He didn't use anthropocetic because that means male or female. But he said, if anyone, that's interesting. So now he says that if he, if he wanted to mean uh, a male, a man, he would have used the word andros, uh, but in this case, he didn't. Well, let's just keep reading. Verse 2, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Now, we'll come back and deal with that in just a second. However, the word that he speaks of, andros, is there. Look over to the right. It's the Greek word andra, which is the word, it means either husband or or man. This word is never, ever, ever used to describe or to refer to a woman or just the entirety of human being. In other words, of mankind. Okay. Tease could be a word that's used for anyone, whosoever. Even the word cosmos, which is the word world, that could refer to all of, of, of humankind. Or as he said, the word anthropos, that also could refer to mankind. But andra, no, never. As a matter of fact, this is a word that is brought up when Jesus is speaking with the woman at the well. She says, I don't have a husband. She uses the, the phrase, uk echo andra, which is not, I have a husband. Uh, however, Jesus turns around and, and emphasizes husband, a man. He says, andra first. So it's clear without question, 
You won't find any Greek student, scholar, teacher, whomever that will tell you that this word is ever used to refer to men and women or a woman. And when we look at the phrase again, notice what's also there. The word is mias gunaikas andras, which is one wife, husband. Now, the word wife is from the word uh, gyne, which, which is obviously where we get the word gynecologist. But in this case, it's the gynecos, which is a wife, one wife, husband. Meaning, and this word is only ever used in reference to women. Plus, you don't know the real correct meaning behind husband, one wife, and wife, and one husband. That phrase that Paul used, which is an idiom, you don't know the meaning behind that. Read it in its correct context, not in your complementary view that disagrees with Scripture. He, he attempts to make the case that this is an idiom. Well, no, it's not. It's not really an idiom. <laughs> uh, it's not an idiom, especially in the sense that we don't get the meaning from it. If you take it as an idiom or someone says it is, you know what? I'll even grant you that. But it's clear if it's an idiom what it means, although I say it's not an idiom. But it's clear uh, that if it is, it's clear that the reference is one woman for this man. That's the qualification. But then something else is there as well. If we drop down to verse four, it says he must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children uh, submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? Now, keeping things in context as well. Who is supposed to be the head of the house? This part isn't debatable either. And he, he didn't, I don't think he makes this, this issue as well. Uh, the husband is the head of the wife. That part is clear. Paul makes that part. Jesus is the head of the husband. Um, he's the head of the church, but the man is the head of the wife. And so he's using this exact same analogy in terms of running the church. And so it cannot be, if you use this analogy, that it also applies to a woman, because in this regard, the woman cannot be over the man. Now, let's look at some other scriptures also that I think that he fails to, to bring into, uh, into account properly. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2, 8, where it says that I desire in every place that men, men should, and by the way, the word for men is andras, that men, males, should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that the women, and there's a distinction to like us, uh, women should adorn themselves respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly attire. Look what it says. But with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works, let a woman, and the word that's used here is the word gyne, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. Here's that word, that word submissiveness. I do not permit a woman... What word is used there? Uh, Ganaki, woman, to teach or exercise authority over a man. There's the word andros. And so what's clear here, what's clear here is the distinction between male and female. Let's finish something up real quick. It says, rather she is to remain silent. Now, the <laughs> for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Now, we'll, we won't go too far into verse 13 and 14. Um, but it says, before Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. So that seems to be in tracking and going along with the whole point of her being in submission. Well, what happened at the fall? At the fall, the woman was placed under the male headship. In other words, she was placed in a submissive role because of her role. For how long? Until he changes it, until God determines that it will be different. And he's, but he did say this, though, that uh, from that point on, that she would strive, that she would go after, that she would contend for basically his role. And we see that happening now. Unfortunately, we have men such as this brother here who is helping women to go against the roles that God has put out. It's not an issue of who's superior, who's better, who's smarter. No, it's an issue of order, how God has ordain these things. Not that, that that she doesn't have the ability to speak well or to teach or to learn. That's not it at all. That's never the case. As a matter of fact, there are men who are very knowledgeable, who know how to teach, who know how to speak, but also are disqualified from being a pastor. But in this passage, one portion that tends to get highlighted 
to the detriment of the other portion. And in verse 12, he says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Now, I'm not sure how he handles this, but oftentimes they'll say that a woman can 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 um, teach or lead or what have you uh, if she's got some sort of spiritual covering. And that's why you'll see some people even actually put a head covering over the women. Look at the first part. Look at what comes before then. He says, I do not permit a woman to teach. And there's two things here to teach over a man let alone dealing with the whole part of exercising authority where someone will say, well, she's not exercising authority. Well, in this regard, if she's a pastor, she is. But she can't even teach over a man. Those are two separate things. And so that part is clear. This this is not, this is not really debatable uh, unless someone just wants to adhere to their own standards, unless you feel like you've got some sort of new revelation. Now, Paul also addresses this again in 1 Corinthians 14. In verse 34, he says, the, um, as in all churches of the saints, verse 34, the women should keep silent. What's the word for women? Uh, Gonikes, which is women, should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in their sword. Again, submission, as the law also says. In other words, that this was something that was also required prior to the cross as well. So if there's anything that they desire to learn, who's the they, uh, being these same women, let them ask their husbands, the word andras, at home, for it's shameful for a uh, for a woman to speak. And it's the word gonike, here in Greek, uh, gonike, for a woman to speak in church. And in this case, the point isn't that she couldn't open her mouth and say anything. She couldn't pray. She couldn't praise God. She couldn't worship. No, the point was, um, in this case, how things were out of order that she was not allowed to, to do those things. She was not allowed to lead, to uh, to give guidance and so forth, which is what Paul says. I do not permit a woman to, to teach or to take authority over, man. And so Paul has also given out the guidelines for who can have these, these roles. Now, in the first century church, were there women who were uh, servants or deacons? Well, or deaconesses? Not in the sense of someone having an office, having authority. There's always been people who've been servants, such as Phoebe. But was Phoebe in an official role where she had headship or or leadership or authority over men? Where she would no, that's not the case. Now, it is not the same to say that a woman cannot share the gospel with a male. That is not what that's saying. It's to teach or to have authority over. And so he, now, in this regard, you have to have women to be able to say this is what the word of the Lord says in terms of leading someone to Christ. But in, as far as the church is concerned, she cannot teach over a man in the church. That person is not part of the church yet. And she cannot have authority over that man uh, who is also who is now part of the church. And so someone like a Phoebe or a Priscilla doing just that, um, saying what the word says, that's not taking authority over a man. And that in that case is also serving. A woman can serve. Can she have a, a role where she is officially over a male? Paul is clear and explicit on that. And what you did, you just forced, and I know people can get in the feeling when I say this, but it's the truth. You just forced Caucasian complementarian theology that was invented by them to keep women subjugated. Yeah. Because it goes against historically the Bible and historically how we women got to be subjugated in the Christian church. Anyways. First Timothy don't say that. You ain't read it. Matter of fact, you haven't read the original Greek because no way to read the original text and come away from that. Because clearly Paul says in verse 11, and likewise the women. He didn't say wives. He said women. There's no pronoun that said there in that text. It's likewise women. Meaning that whatever the men are, the women. And you don't know law either because you couldn't know law because if you knew law, you'll understand that the law has a lot of point places that where it's written in the masculine. So he brings up verse 11. He says it doesn't say, and he's correct. The pronoun there is not there. And the word that's used here is this word, Gnikos again. Now this word could be wives or this word could be women. Doesn't matter. But he says, uh, likewise, wives or women must be dignified, not slanderous, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Verse 12, let the deacons each be the husband of one wife. And there's that term again. So, me asking like us, Andres, which is also, again, we're talking about 
a wife of a, one wife to the husband, one woman to the man, however you want to look at it. And it's clear, he's speaking about reading the Greek, he's not doing a very good job of it because it's clear that we're contrasting uh, a deacon, this office of a deacon, and he says, likewise, women, and then he reverts back to just as they're supposed to be this way, you're supposed to be a certain way. And it's clear that he's contrasting males, deacons, with women. It, and we know so because verse 12, he says, let the deacon each be the husband of one wife. Well, that makes absolutely no sense if the women are also able to fulfill this role of a deacon. And so this person, I don't know why he's doing what he's doing, but it's clear he's not using scripture properly. You do not find, you certainly won't find Greek scholars who's going to back him up with what he's saying. He is clearly wrong. And I think what he's doing is he's taking advantage of the fact that people may or may not know the, the, the words, uh, the Greek, like he thinks he does, which he doesn't. Uh, and because of that, he has failed and he is misleading people. So, Brother Johnson, thank you for sending the video. I hope this helps anyone out there that's looking to understand or to address something that he might bring up in that regard. But it's clear that they cannot fulfill that role. Amen.